my name is Yair Levy, and I'm an associate professor in the school. Uh, I've been with the school close to nine years now. Time is flying when you're having fun. Um, the purpose of this presentation is actually to go beyond uh, what is covered in the other paper that was in your packet, but a little bit give you uh, reasons why we do certain things, the literature search, or uh, why we do the process, or how we do the process to conduct a, a systematic uh, review of the literature. Now, when I say a systematic review of the literature, I'll talk about the process, but I want to start before that to explain the reasons that beyond just writing a literature review, you use literature for almost anything you write, as you've noticed so far as of the presentation from yesterday and as of your coursework and the feedback you're, you got through coursework is that we really need to back up or anchor everything that we claim in literature. So the centrality of literature to anything that we do is, is highly important. Let me start by uh, showing you a very quick uh, YouTube movie, and then I'll explain why I'm showing you that. A brain-computer interface is a direct communication pathway between the brain and a technological device. While connecting nervous systems to computers may sound like science fiction, scientists have already achieved this feat in a variety of systems. One group of researchers at the University of Pittsburgh connected a robotic arm to a motor cortex of a cat. Here you see the animal using the arm to feed itself. Dr. John Chapman at the State University of New York has used radio signals coupled with electrical stimulation of the whiskers and at the pleasure center of the brain to create remote-controlled mice. Even the human brain has been harnessed to control computers. Here you see a mechanism that translates an EEG signal from your scalp into an on-screen command. Detection of a specific potential tied to your brain's perception of the character it desires to use allows the user to select letters to form words and sentences. Please exciting. So why am I showing you this video? Where the reason is, if you're interested in getting into any area of research, even if you've been a, a practitioner in that field for many, many years, you still need to go into the literature and learn the literature, understand the literature, capture that literature, organize the literature in a way that you can later on retrieve it. Otherwise, as a researcher, not as a practitioner, you won't be able to make any arguments for anything that you're going to put forward. And that's the whole idea. So if you're interested in something new like brain interface, uh, brain-computer interface or brain-computer interaction, um, where do you go and how do you start essentially is what we're going to talk about next. But the idea is that even if you dive into something new or even if you dive to something that you've been doing for the past couple of decades, you still need to go to the literature, you still need to anchor your work in the literature. So what are we going to do uh, in this session? And I'll, I'll try to uh, uh, go into details uh, in a minute to each and every area. I'll briefly just say the uh, origin of this presentation in a minute. And uh, you know that it's from the uh, paper. But essentially, uh, I'll, I want to define what a research is, because it's important for all of us to understand uh, why we need literature when we conduct research, okay? And then uh, we'll talk about why do we need to conduct, uh, why do we uh, conduct literature, obviously, is crucial. Uh, why do we need to use literature in general uh, as, as, a, as a, an idea for, or as a foundation for research? And then I'll talk about some of the stages, and this is where we took the systematic approach, uh, my co-author, Dr. Ellis, and I took the systematic approach, the simple system of input processing and output uh, philosophy, and this is how we laid it all out. And the idea is 
again, not just to create this process to develop a literature review section, if you're talking about literature review, but also to help you develop, for example, the problems uh, statement that was talked about yesterday. So um, the process, some of the stages in that process are related. And you're going to see that I'm going to address some of the issues that were raised yesterday. For example, when we go, uh, I'll, I'll talk in a minute. When we go to talk about the input, you will see the quality. We, we introduced the quality. So obviously bragging a little bit, this paper actually was the best paper. And that's enough about bragging. Uh, but essentially, uh, it, it's, we're happy with what we did in the paper in terms of, of laying out the foundation for uh, people like you and other novice researchers to understand a very structured process, a framework for uh, doing literature review, starting with the literature search and then processing it and then producing a literature review at the end. So what is research? Why do we even uh, put ourselves into something that is called research is let's go and define research. And this is obviously the definition. And notice that um, the idea here is to uh, intentionally, we're intentionally set out to enhance uh, our understanding, right? Or, or the research community's understanding, right? Of a, a certain phenomena and uh, expect to communicate. That's the crucial piece. You were supposed to communicate uh, what we discovered to the large scientific community. So if you have done a research, a beautiful research on something, but you have never communicated that, it's still not considered as a research, right? The research process in this definition goes all the way from the beginning to the end. And so obviously to communicate that is what we use literature for, so we can disseminate the information that we found out. And uh, the, the famous quote is, uh, if we knew what, we, uh, what it was that we were doing, it would not be called research. And there, there is a reason behind just, just uh, uh, sound as, as a sort of a joke. The idea is that if you're already 100% certain and know that something is, that the phenomena is happening the way that it is, then why do you need to do research to begin with? Okay, that's the idea. The idea is that we are conducting research in areas that we have some doubts or we need clarifications or we need a theory to explain or we need to test the theory if it's applicable. That's the idea. So why we uh, conduct literature? Obviously we conduct literature uh, 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 review in, in terms of uh, producing that review is to understand first of all what is available in what we call the body of knowledge. As I just demonstrated with the video, there is a brand new area. Let's say you are interested in going and in, uh, investigating that area. How can you contribute to that area of research if you don't fully comprehend, if you don't fully grasp what is already known? it will be useless to come and recreate something that was already done. It will not contribute any, uh, uh, anything to the progression of knowledge. And of course, nowadays with the amount, vast amount of research that is going on, we have very much difficulties finding those niche areas. But it is possible, right? So the idea is for you to scan enough the literature and to understand the body of knowledge. And one common mistake among uh, others is that people assume that the body of knowledge is only in English. Okay? And this is a common issue. And uh, Dr. Zink men mentioned a very important point yesterday about the fact that some students come in and say there is no literature available on certain area. Right? And we know that that is most likely incorrect because if you search enough, you will find it. The point is that not only if you search enough, can you search in all the languages in the world? That's the key. Can you read all articles that have done in other uh, countries that have written in other languages? Most likely not. 
And so it's a crucial not to come and say there is, I, I've searched all the body of knowledge and I could not find a single piece that has anything to do with what I'm interested to work on. So this is where it's so fundamentally crucial to your progression in your development of your dissertation and in your development of any research that you're going to conduct that you need to uh, use that as a foundation. Obviously, you need to develop some kind of a theoretical foundation for your work. And why do we need theoretical foundation? Why don't we just go and develop a software, an app for an iPhone and get a PhD for it? Right? We don't. Why? Because the, uh, the way that re research operates is we're developing theories or we're dealing with a higher level than pure practitioner solutions. Okay? We're dealing with uh, issues that are larger than a single application per se. Even if part of a research you're developing a product or you're developing a software or an application, you still, the research will be on other aspects, on the theoretical aspects related to that product or uh, um, software. And so this is the, uh, the idea that goes uh, uh, along with that. And this is related to, of course, uh, uh, what is already known. You don't want to come and you want to propose something that is already known because if it, there is an existing theory that may not have been tested in a certain context that you wish, you don't need to reinvent the theory. Right? The example I gave yesterday about the contribution of using ants following ants and the whole philosophy from biology of, of the theory of how they leave the chemicals as, as a foundation for the packet, the, the way that packet switching is working. That's the idea. The idea is to use certain theories that might guide work even in other fields. And as, as an information, all of you guys are here in the information systems program. So as an information systems student, you got to be realized that information systems is a very early, um, uh, very young stream of research. And so when we develop that stream, we must borrow theories from other fields. And so if you're going to look later on, I'll show you the list of theories. There is a wiki, actually, that was developed over the years with a list of all the theories that have been used in uh, information systems uh, research. And you will see that most of them are coming from other fields, right? if not all. Right? And so the idea is to understand what is already, what are the theoretical foundations that will work in a context of a study. And for that, you need to go to the literature. There is no other way for you to capture that. You, even if you go to a, a wiki or a place, they will point you to a literature that was developed or a research that was done on that area. And obviously, making sure that your, your research problem is solid. This is why you need to conduct the literature review as well. And the other uh, metaphor that I always give is when you develop a research, you don't want to stand on shoulders of midgets, right? You want to stand of, on shoulders of giants. You, you really want to have a, a very strong or, or stand on the floor, right? You want to stand on, on giants so you can actually reach higher. That's the whole philosophy. The whole idea here is to really build on something that is solid, on something that you can develop or a couple of theories that you might be able to merge that are coming from giants. And who are these giants for us? I'll explain this in a moment when we look into literature and how it's connected, uh, research papers are connected. So the idea that we had is to develop some kind of a system approach, systematic approach, and to give you some kind of a very simple, hands-on, stages that you can very quickly remember in your head while you go through the literature search and the literature processing and the developing of an output which is the text, the literature review. And you got to realize you guys keep doing the same mistake that you call going to the databases and doing a couple of keyword searches, research. Remember, that's why I defined it before. Going to the library 
or a 